RCM is used mostly in the cases of import of goods and services. It's a VAT treatment that is slightly confusing, especially for startups. Hey everyone, before we move ahead, please click on the subscribe button to stay updated on our weekly business and finance related content, which is incredibly useful for business owners, CEOs, CFOs, entrepreneurs, and those who aspire to be one. Now let's get back to the video. Hey everyone, today let's get into the simplified and practical explanation for reverse charge mechanism or RCM. RCM is used mostly in the cases of import of goods and services. It's a VAT treatment that is slightly confusing, especially for startups. It's mostly only a disclosure and does not really impact your VAT payment. However, it's important to make sure the treatment is done correctly to avoid penalties in the future. In simple terms, a supplier located outside the UAE will mostly not be registered for VAT in the UAE. Therefore, does not charge VAT to its customers in the UAE. So, the registered importer on record accounts for the output VAT on behalf of the supplier outside UAE. This importer then has the option to recover this output VAT as input VAT if it's allowed to do so. The concept here is that the supplier who is located outside the UAE will mostly not be registered for VAT in the UAE. Therefore, will not be charging VAT to any of the importers within the UAE. So the registered importer needs to account for the output VAT on behalf of the supplier itself. This VAT that is now accounted as output VAT can then be claimed as input VAT by the importer on record. This can be claimed only if the importer is allowed to claim these expenses. We have already discussed in our older videos which expenses are not recoverable by a registrant. So now let's get into the practical implementation of RCM when filing for the VAT returns. In row 6, the output VAT of imported goods will be pre-populated automatically. However, if the tax registrant notices an error, this amount can be adjusted in row 7. The remaining output VAT for RCM to be recorded can be mentioned in row 3, mostly used for import of services. All the input VAT that is allowable to claim for RCM can be mentioned in row 10. So in summary, the output VAT for the RCM is to be mentioned in row 3, 6 and 7. The amount to be claimed for RCM can be mentioned in row 10, which is normally the total of the amounts mentioned in 3, 6 and 7. So in most cases while filing for RCM, the net impact is nil and therefore there is no change in the tax payable. So if there is no impact of reverse charge mechanism, why is it being done? Let's get into an example where there is an actual tax impact of using RCM. Let's say company A imports a car which will be used 80% for business purposes and 20% for personal purposes. In this case, the import will be pre-populated in row 6, showing a payable of 5%. However, a purchase of such a vehicle falls under a category of non-recoverable expenses. Therefore, input VAT on this cannot be claimed and not included in row 10. In this scenario, company A would have to pay additional 5% on the import of the car when filing the return. Hope this video gave you a better understanding of reverse charge mechanism and how it is implemented when filing your return. Hey everyone, you've reached the end of this video. Thank you all for listening. If you like this content, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like for us to talk about any specific topics, please do let us know in the comments below. Hope to see you in the next video.